So hello everybody, welcome back to the beautiful Lake District. And yes, your eyes are not deceiving you, that is the sunlight. There is a real chill in the air. There's quite high winds today and yeah, it's making it feel a lot colder than what it looks like. He's come to see what all the fuss is about, look. What's going on lads? Who's the intruder? <laughs> this is the start of Hard Knot Pass really. Perhaps a little red telephone box down at the bottom that usually marks the beginning of the pass road. I've cycled up there a couple of times now and it is tough going to say the least. We're hiking up a Wainwright a summit called Slight Side and we're pretty much right slap bang in the middle of my favourite part of the Lake District. And if you can't tell, we are going to be doing a little wild camp. A lot of you probably expected to see me in Snowdonia actually and I got really ill, really fluey and kind of a heavy fever and I just had to come home. I felt horrible, it, it hit me very very hard and <clears throat> as you may be able to tell, I'm still sort of just about getting over it now but I think I'm one of those sorts of people where there's only so much resting I could do, I needed to get out into the hills. So we're getting some beautiful views already despite the wind. It's the visibility that's making this really amazing. I mean, we can see right back up towards Bowfell up here, Hard Knot, and then we can see a little bit of, I think, Grey Friar with the snow on him up there, and then oh, all the way around to Hart of Fell. And I'm hoping this visibility sticks around because it's only going to help with any photography we get, of course. Just got my little hip pack here. This is really the first true test of it. I've actually brought my Nikon Z7 out with me. You might have thought the OM5 was the obvious choice, the little Olympus, but I don't know. Do you ever get that kind of inexplicable feeling of, I want to go out with that camera today? And that's that. <laughs> that is that. So, I mean, I've even got my little tripod with me, my little travel tripod, the Benro. So, not sure if I'll need it, but we're nice and prepared. I think it already goes without saying that finding a pitch for the tent today out of this wind is going to be pretty important. Well, we must only be, what, 15 minutes into this hike and already panoramic views of this incredible mountain range. Yeah, I mean, we've, I think this is actually Bowfell, this conical shaped one on the right, Esk Pike. And I think we're getting the first glimpse of slight side over here on the left hand side with a few little bits and bobs of snow on him as well. So we've just got an amazing moment of light looking back towards Greyfriar, the sort of snow-capped mountain you could see in the background. And then on this opposite hill here over the valley is Hard Knot Castle. It's an old Roman fort. So really, really old. Such a cool thing to photograph. And I mean, the light's incredible. The textures are beautiful as we go from crag to crag. And of course, look at that sky as well. Oh, look at that. Look at that. We've actually got... We've actually got the light on the Roman fort as we speak. So I've got one image where the light's hitting the Roman fort and a second image of the light that's hitting Grey Friday. I think this is going to be the shot though. That's beautiful. So there we can see slight side pretty much directly above us there, which is nice. You know, I always like hiking into a mountain and you can sort of see it along most of the route. It looks quite ominous from here. In fact, the forecast is actually saying there's a chance of us just being up in the clag, up in a load of low cloud. And I mean, if you look over in that direction there, you know, it doesn't look too impossible. So I'll enjoy this visibility perhaps whilst I can.
So I've got my Osprey, ooh, Osprey Ether, 70 litre. It's probably, probably a little bit too big. I sort of bought this bag really for multi-day hikes. But one thing I always think, because I think it was my photography bag as well, is yes, you know, you can have a big bag, but you don't necessarily have to full, fill it to the brim. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean the bag's going to be heavier. So this kind of does me for all my kind of wild camps. Sometimes I even use one of my bigger photography bags as well. And then as for my tent, I've got the Alp Kit Duram 3, I think it's called. I certainly should have checked before I set out, but I've only used it twice on two separate wild camping trips and it's been brilliant both times. However, I think today will be a really good test just because it's so windy, you know, it's really windy out. So yeah, it'll be a good test to see how robust it is, but I'm sure it'll be fine. It seems to be a brilliant tent and I really like Alp Kit stuff as well. I feel like it's mostly really well made and seem to be a good company. Right, we've got a good plain sight of slight side now. So you can see it's all quite gradual. It's been quite gradual since we've left the car. And then we'll probably have a bit of a steep pull up towards the top. This is a wonderful area. Honestly, it feels so wild and, and desolate and remote. It's fantastic. So I just wanted to show you as we are pretty much on the final approach of slight side now, which is nice, but yeah, it's going to start getting a bit sweaty, I think. We're not too far from the top now, just one last little slog really. that the light is just beautiful really really dramatic I think the wind has got even stronger it's really consistent so it feels even more important now that when I when I find a pitch up here it's going to give us a little bit of shelter because yeah this wind is relentless so I've just stopped here quickly to grab an image of just this incredible scene down here back down into Eskdale, literally where we've started this afternoon's hike. Heart of Fell is just looking so sinister through all of the, through all of the haze. He is black. It looks fantastic. Some beautiful clouds again. And then, yeah, just to top it off, some stunning light coming in from the right hand side and just popped it in aperture priority again. It's working fine and a couple of snapshots down there. It really is all about that light. It is phenomenal. And then I'll tell you what, I'll probably meet you at the top because as you can see there, we are pretty much there. Wow, still not quite at the top. Look at that. Isn't that just incredible? Up in the distance there, we've got some back towards the Coniston Fells, some sort of snow dusted mountains and then down there I think that's Burnmore Tarn sort of Ilgill Head and Wind Rig over there and you may be able to see about there just uh, a tiny little slither of wasp water but that is just absolutely beautiful really special so I'm assuming the top is just one of these um, one of these little peaks here of all of this rock so we'll go and investigate Oh, this is absolute madness, this wind. Oh, I mean, I'm only doing this for the sake of it, but oh, I don't want to get to the top and not actually touch the top. So oh, we're there, we're there. Just that little knoll oh, is the true peak. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh. So there we go. Wow, slight side, ah, done. Ah, incredibly beautiful, dramatic views. Look at that light there. And then look at that. If you can even see 
back down to Burnmore Town. Fantastic, but I'm going to say dangerously windy. <laughs> so it is imperative that I get a little bit further down and just find somewhere, take as long as it needs to take to find somewhere that's going to have a good bit of shelter. That is really, really important. Wow, this is fresh. <laughs> So I've come down just a little bit, actually the peak you could see is only there, but I mean the kind of summit itself, this wall of rock is sheltering us a little bit, you can probably even hear there's still a tiny bit of wind and it is swirling around, it's one of them, but I feel as if down here is the best that we're going to get, so I'm obviously going to try and find the flattest little section that I can, try and find a bit where there isn't too many isn't too many rocks impeding the, the tent, but I think we should be fine. There's enough space here to find a good little spot. There we go. You can see there it fits pretty snugly <laughs> between this selection of rocks here and yeah, it'll do. So we'll get the tent out. I've also, being a landscape photographer, got my camera out there, poised because, I mean, look at that in the background. We're just getting these rays of light back down on Burnmore Tarn down there. It looks fantastic. So just keeping my eye out, firing off a few shots every now and again. All right, let's get the tent out. So there we go, we are nicely set up and um, yeah, that's the gaff for the night. It's a really good tent in fairness, This um, it feels like it's got a lot of space. I'll just show you, I've got the Thermarest X light there. I've actually got a new pillow, I got this off my brother and his girlfriend for Christmas and uh, yeah, I've yet to try it. It's a lot bigger, both packed and unpacked wise owl outfitters but yeah it, it feels like it's got a lot of stuff we're talking about travel pillows here but you know yourselves these things are important for a good night's sleep uh, this might have used a few times now it's brilliant but yeah i just love all the space in this tent the Duram 2 and yeah loads of pockets it's really well ventilated one thing i like as well it's got it's two, it's got two of these quite large vestibule areas here so I can have one to sort of cook in, which I'll be doing in a second. I'm getting a bit of hot food on the go. And then one where I can kind of just put my bag in, you know, overnight if it's raining and stuff. So yeah, um, really, really spacious, definitely. So here it is from the outside. Not really too much to look at, but yeah, lovely, lovely size, nice and spacious. Not too heavy in the bag as well. I think I would prefer to have a little bit more space when I'm up on the fell rather than have something lighter and smaller. You know, that's a bit of a never ending debate, that one, isn't it? But that's what suits me. You probably saw the pole. It's a sort of like one big giant H shape and it all sort of clips together ma magnetically. I quite like that actually. It, it feels like the tent's got one pole. I suppose it kind of has, but you know what I mean? It's, um, it, it's really simple to put up, nice and easy. And like I was showing you before, by the time you get the footprint down, you kind of know it's going to fit in that section. Right, I've got only one thing on the mind now and that's to get a little bit of food on. So we'll get the jet boil out and uh, see what's on the menu for tonight. So let's have a look. We've got a couple of bits and bobs. Oh, firstly, we've got a chocolate brownie from Lidl. That'll, that'll be the starter actually. <laughs> uh, and then we've got, we've got a cup of soup, a vegetable one with croutons, top drawer. That'll be the true starter. And then, well, we've got an all day breakfast for the morning. I'm not sure if I'll have that. I never seem to have breakfast. You know, I usually get up in the morning and then I'm keen to just get down the fell and 
just get into a cafe or something. And then we've got well, just a little quinoa, really. The, I, I'm not really sure if I'm going to have that. Uh, yeah, I might just stick to the cup of soup and the brownie. I've got a couple of bits of fruits and crisps and snacks. Got some of these beasts. Got some of these beasts, but yeah. We're past the sunset now, so oh, I'll show you. Yeah, it doesn't really look like much is going on in terms of the colour and any photography. However, that light earlier on was fantastic, so I'm happy to just get into the tent now, chill for a little bit, and then, yeah, time for a bit of food, a bit of grub. So there we go, we are we are cooked, we're having the starter. I'm, I'm gonna have the brownie after this, or if I have something else, I'm not gonna have it to start with, I'm gonna be good. <laughs> Probably enjoy it a bit more, but yeah, I just, um, I was enjoying that, just cooking up my cup of soup. I think it's like, there's just something about it, isn't it? Like coming out into the mountains anyway, but wild camping on your own as well, solo camping, whatever you want to call it, it's just fantastic, like it's, I just, like I was saying earlier, I just, um, I've been a bit ill, a bit under the weather and I just needed to get out and I feel like, as cliche as it sounds, being out in nature, it, it never lets me down, you know, it never fails to refresh me, to give me like a little bit of a reset, if you will, and yeah, I, I think solo camping as well, more than anything. You know, you just kind of hear with your thoughts, have no phone signal or anything. It's just fantastic. Like, I really get to just chill out and take a few photographs along the way and eat a cup of soup or drink, eat. Comment down below, what's going on there? It's got to be eat, surely, hasn't it, a soup? Although I'm, I'm going to be drinking. Anyway, I'm going to chill out for a little bit, enjoy my jet boil and my brownie. Hopefully this wind dies down a little bit because... Even though we've got this little bit of shelter here, sometimes it swings round and it's brutal, like tents rocking all over the place. All right, so a bit of an update. Oh, I'm probably blinding you there. <laughs> Hopefully that's a bit better. Update is, it is absolutely freezing it was forecast it's about minus it's going to drop down to about minus one overnight so yeah it's chilly it's it's just you know it's okay when you're hiking away isn't it you keep warm you warm up but the moment you're still oh so i have tucked myself nicely in the sleeping bag the tootsie the nice and cold down the bottom there we've got the uh the thermarest mat which is well imperative really and yeah, I mean, it's early enough. It must be about half seven, eight o'clock now. I'm just gonna bed down for the night, watch a little bit of YouTube, listen to the radio, listen to some tunes and just chill out, man. Just chill out and enjoy it. You know, of course it's cold, it's not ideal, <laughs> but this is why we do it. We come out, we enjoy the challenge, we enjoy the serenity, the isolation, and, and then we stick YouTube on for a bit of company. <laughs> but no, you know what I mean. Anyway, I shall see you in the morning. Where hopefully, we'll cross the fingers, um, hopefully we're greeted with a beautiful sunrise. We can always hope. Good night. <laughs> so it's about, hang on, let me find out what time it is. It's about midnight, is it? Yeah, midnight, just after. It's grim. It's <laughs> really bad, um, to be honest. Part of me is considering, considering that I might actually bail. Um, I, I've, for the past 10 minutes, I've just been sort of holding the tent up with my arm. I've been out once or twice just to sort of re-peg areas of the tent. Um, you just get a feeling, don't you? It just doesn't feel right. The wind's definitely picked up. I think that probably goes without saying. It wasn't really forecast to. It was forecast to be, you know, fairly high winds as it was when we set the tent up, but yeah, this has definitely got worse. Hmm. You just get a feeling, don't you? I think I might give it another few minutes and just, 
just see how we get on. But well, this isn't looking good at all. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm calling it a day, unfortunately, because it's. I wouldn't say it feels like properly dangerous or anything, but I don't know. Like you just know, don't you? This. I mean, at, at the very best, I'm just going to be sat up all night fearing for the tent, and obviously fearing for myself a little bit. It just doesn't feel right, man. So I'm very reluctantly just going to get everything packed up now and then slowly, just try and take, take my time, try and take it slow, slowly just start making my way back down the mountain until I get to the car. I've got the head torch, I've got batteries, you know, for the head torch, spare batteries, so it'll be fine. It's going to be a little bit grim, but it, it feels like the right thing to do, you know. I mean, look at this. This is madness. <laughs> this isn't right. Oh. It's even like raining or sleeting a little bit now or something, which was not forecast. The forecast was for, honestly, it was for 11 mile an hour winds with the occasional 20 mile an hour wind gust. What we had up there, especially when I was in the thick of it, I, guess I wasn't going to film it, but it was horrendous. You know, we, it, it takes your breath away. You can hardly stand up in it. Like It's got to have been at least 40 mile an hour, 50, maybe even more than that, honestly. But anyway, I'm going to make some progress nice and slow and it's just going to be a head down job so I'll catch up with you when I get back to the car. Oh, oh, there we go. We're back. Oh, we're back. Back to the car. My gosh, man. In all honesty, the sort of hike back down wasn't too bad. It was obviously just a bit of a slog. We're kind of half past two in the morning now, nearly three o'clock in the morning, and it just felt never ending, you know. Uh, but like I said, it was just head down, one step at a time. And I think throughout all of that sort of scenario there, the main thing was to not panic and to not rush. Like rushing was just not going to get me anywhere, you know. I had to just relax and almost tell myself like, you know, I'm just packing up and going because I can't be bothered. Nothing nothing bad's happened, you know. Um, I feel like that was definitely the right thing to do. I know that already, especially now that I'm back to the car. It was an instinct that took over me that was like, mate, right, come on, off we go now. Um, I don't think it was a particularly dangerous situation but I feel like it could have got a bit dangerous if I'd have just decided to stick it out I don't know it feels like I've done the right thing anyway I am shattered I'm going home <laughs> thank you for watching little bit of a, a a little bit of a mad one to be honest but these things happen and maybe one or two nice images as well on the way up it's a shame we didn't get the sunrise but anyway I'm gonna go home now thank you so much for watching if you've got a quick second to spare if you could hit the thumbs up button, I'll be so grateful. That helps me out a million. And, oh man, I'm shattered. See you on the next one. <laughs> out. Mm -hmm.